Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. Uh, I just finished this book maybe five minutes ago and I, I really want to talk about it because this month I have been reviewing creepy spooky books that I really liked and this is a creepy spooky book. Perfect opportunity to talk about it. This is A Hundred Fathoms Below by Stephen L. Kent and Nicholas Kaufman. This book came out very recently, October 9th, I want to say, ish. I was not sent this book by the publisher. By the way, this is just a book that I've had my eyes on for a while. I was staring at it. I told myself when it releases, treat yourself because this sounds like an Erica book. You know how I love the sea and I love creepy, creature-esque books and my goodness this checked all of the things on my perfect book list and having read it I highly recommend it if you want a spooky horror Halloweenish book. First off let's talk about the authors. It is co-written by Stephen L. Kent and Nicholas Kaufman. Stephen L. Kent he's written for Wired, Boy's Life, Rolling Stone, MSNBC, and numerous other publications. He is the author of the best-selling Rogue Clone series and the ultimate history of video games. No clue what those are but cool. Um, and then we have Nicholas Kaufman, who his name sounds familiar, but I've never read anything from him before, so let's see. He is the Bram Stoker Award nominated, Thriller Award nominated, and Shirley Jackson Award nominated, author of Walking Shadows, Collected Stories, General Slocum's Gold, Hunt at World's End, Chasing the Dragon, Dying is My Business, and In the Shadow of the Axe. So he writes a lot of horror. He sounds like a really interesting person. So those are the authors. Uh, like I said before, never read anything by them, but I am very much so interested now having read this. Let me give you a quick synopsis. Honestly, I couldn't give you the best off the top of my head, so I'm going to refer to the inner flap. A hundred fathoms below, the depth at which sunlight no longer penetrates the ocean. 1983, the U.S. nuclear submarine USS Roanoke embarks on a classified spy mission into Soviet waters. Their goal? To find evidence of a new, faster, and deadlier Soviet submarine that could tip the balance of the Cold War. But the Roanoke crew isn't alone. Something is on board with them. Something cunning and malevolent. When the lights go out and horror fills the corridors, it will take everything the crew has to survive the menace coming from outside and inside the submarine. Combining Tom Clancy's eye for international intrigue with Stephen King's sense of the macabre, A Hundred Fathoms Below takes readers into depths from which there is no escape. Now, reading this, that's really interesting. I couldn't help but compare this to a Stephen King novel because it just felt so reminiscent of that, uh, but it was still really enjoyable. Not to say that Stephen King is bad. Stephen King, well, let's not get into Stephen King. This book is so entertaining. This is a gripping page turner that you can't put down. There is so much tension throughout this book. Um, it's so claustrophobic. Um, nothing feels certain. Everything is at stakes. The stakes are so high and, and no one feels safe. Honestly, you feel as if everyone is going to die. <laughs> that, that's how this book feels like. And I don't want to spoil anyone on what this, this evil creature is in this book, you find out really early on what what is going on and what is is happening to the crew members. So at the beginning you think, oh, it's a it's a plague, it's a mutiny, but it's not. I just I don't want to say anything. This book is so enjoyable, but I can see a lot of people not enjoying it because it's just so out there. But if you can suspend your disbelief and just say, well, what the heck, uh, then you would really enjoy this a lot. It's very, there. Are, there's gore. There, there are moments where I was honestly really scared. It made me fear the dark, if you, if you would. One thing I want to talk about with this book is that the characters in this book I found really intriguing. These characters are fleshed out 
uh, I want to say slightly below surface level. You don't know too much about these characters to where you're fully invested in them, but you do find out just enough to where you're rooting for specific characters. And I love some of the questions that this one brings up because it's set in the 1980s, so we follow a lot of these crew members as they're dealing with certain prejudice things that are going on. And despite it being honestly just a book about this crazy thing that's going on and honestly no, n no answers are given, you're going to finish reading this book thinking, okay, so where did this come from? Why did this happen? What's going on? Why are they targeting the the submarines? You don't, you don't get these answers. I enjoyed this for, I don't know, just the fun of it. It's so entertaining. So what I'm trying to say is if you can just suspend your disbelief for a bit and just hop on this book for the ride, you just might enjoy this a lot, a lot, a lot. I really did. And the last thing I want to talk about really quick and then I will shut up and go is the fact that this book, while it, it is scary on a creature element, it's, it's more terrifying in the setting um, and that is it's set in the submarine hundreds of feet you know below the surface so we have over a hundred people in this crew in this submarine and mind you submarines are not big so the fact that there's not a lot of space all of this shit is going down in the submarine and they can't escape is so terrifying the submarines are kind of terrifying in and of themselves. Can you imagine being a crew member on a submarine actually working, doing that? They spend months and months in the submarine below the surface, not on land. It, it's so strange to me and unnerving and creepy. I get claustrophobic thinking about it because these crewmen have these increments of six hour shifts. So for six hours they work, six hours they, they eat and rest, and then six hours they sleep. And then you repeat this cycle for months and months on end. And, and it's just so unsettling for me. And for that alone, I really, really like this. I'm gonna end this with a quote from Grady Hendrix. He blurbed the back of the book and he said, a hundred fathoms below is what would happen if the hunt for Red October had a baby with Salem's lot and it joined the Navy. And that alone, I think, could hook a lot of people. I highly recommend A Hundred Fathoms Below by Stephen L. Kent and Nicholas Kaufman. It is perfect for Halloween and you should read it because I said so. I really enjoyed it. It's super good. Read it. Okay. You guys have a great day or night wherever you are and I will see you in another video very soon. I don't know if I'm going to be reviewing any more spooky books for October. We only have a couple, a couple days left so we'll see. You never know. But this might be it. But I don't, I don't know. You never know. Okay. Bye.